Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before we get started on tonight's story, I'm going to let you know about my small cyborg son. Today's the last day that you're able to order the MCP Glow in the Dark Cyborg Plush. You can find a link in the description down below, or you can head over to makeship.com, check out their entire cyborg sale. If you want to get your hands on them, this is a limited time release, so this is your last chance. Today is the last chance you could be able to get them. I think you will have a few hours if you manage to catch this video when it comes out. If you don't catch this video when it comes out, then uh, phew, uh, go, go check it out, because maybe it's still there, maybe not. I hope you guys do enjoy this plush. I hope it's something that you like. I hope we're able to hit goal on it so it's able to be made. If not, then hey, I've been incredibly busy this year and I haven't had a chance to really push this bad boy out as much as I would like to. So, better luck next time. But it can only be funded if you guys want to participate. So, take a look in the description, click the link, see if he's a guy that you would like, and if he is, go ahead and grab yourself one. It's a great Christmas gift this year. And now, on to tonight's story. My work requires that I often go on business trips. I like the job, I like meeting new people, I like visiting new cities. But for this story, that's neither here nor there. I just arrived in Chicago and settled down in a place that you could probably call high class. I'd personally never shell out the exorbitant funds required for these sorts of things, but if the company's paying, then I won't complain. One night I'd come back drunk as hell after a night out with clients. At some point during the AM hours, I went to the bathroom and slipped on some water, falling into the wall space between the toilet and the shower. I stuck on my arm, but it actually went straight through. I wasn't sure why such a fancy place used such fragile materials for their restrooms, but this oddity really didn't seem right. The fall wasn't that hard. I couldn't understand how it broke so easily. So I stepped back, staring at the gaping, newly formed hole. I wasn't exactly sure how hotels were designed in relation to how much space is between the rooms, but I was under the impression that they're built side by side. And if that was the case, there must now be a hole in my neighbor's closet or something, which it was rather concerning. It was late as hell, so I decided to wait until the morning to tell them about it so they didn't freak out and think I was some weird asshole making holes on the walls. The morning comes and I knock on their door. They open up and are mostly understanding about what happened. They take a look around each of their rooms, but there's no hole anywhere. All right, thought to myself, don't have to worry about anything there, but I still have to tell the front desk or something. I wasn't really prepared to pay for the damages though. So. Stop being so fucking cheap with your building, you know? However, I decided to put it off until after all my work was done. So I come back the following night, take a look at the hole again, and it was really big. And out of curiosity, I took my phone's flashlight and shined it through. If it didn't lead to a room, then what was it? You know, just a random space in between? The first thing I saw was an old looking notebook lying around. Interesting. I reached in and picked it up, wiping a thin layer of dust off of it. It wasn't really distinctive looking, just a plain red notebook. One you could probably buy anywhere. But it was the contents inside that were... disconcerting. It was just pages and pages of messily scribbled nonsense. At least, that's what I thought it was at first. There was definitely a pattern in the haphazard symbols on the page. Another language, maybe? I don't know. Occasionally there would be diagrams. These were easier to understand. Still rather cryptic. They looked like detailed outlines of a building. After a few seconds of looking it through, I came to the definitive conclusion. It was the hotel. What caught my eyes was the 15th floor, which was labeled more clearly than the others. There was what looked like a staircase descending down from one of the rooms cutting through the floor below. I mean, it didn't really show or describe where it was supposed to lead. The only word at the end of the staircase was Zone CKX9. Now, I'm not sure how many nope situations you've been in, but this probably fit the bill. Despite that, I just kept looking through the hole, you know, just in case it was anything else. And... And there certainly was. With dead candles scattered all about it, there appeared to be a trap door. My blood kind of froze there, and was I supposed to deduce that it led to a fucking staircase on the 15th floor? Eventually, I kind of just forced myself to laugh at it. I mean, there's no way, right? 
I made a decision right then and there. I started tearing down the wall some more, you know, just so that I could get enough space to crawl through into the hidden room. It really wasn't bigger than a walk-in closet. Unfurnished wooden floors, walls, and ceilings with that weird trap door in the middle. I took a moment of hesitation before opening it. I mean, if there was actually a staircase, there was no chance in hell I was going down there. I reached down and grabbed the metal handle. I searched around for a lock, but it wasn't there. I finally lifted it up, not really knowing what to expect. It was only blackness at first, and then I shined my light down. Stairs. Inexplicably, there, there were stairs. It shocked me so much that I instinctively closed it. I, I sat there for a moment, astounded. I started believing that it was just some weird illusion. With that in mind, I opened it up again and carefully stuck my hand down. Not a solid surface. The, the really were stairs. I spent the next few hours trying to figure out what could have been underneath my room. I asked around, I did research, even went down a floor to see for myself, but everything yielded the same conclusion. It was just supposed to be another room. I knocked on the door of the person that I had mapped out to be right below me, but nobody answered. I even did some research online, no similar experiences to mine. In this situation, I did the one thing that I thought was appropriate. I went to my co-worker, Jacob's room, told him about it. At first, he was a bit bothered that I knocked on his door at 1 a.m., but I knew that he'd be interested in this. He was one of those brash, paranormal aficionado guys. A bit annoying at times, but I'd say that we were friendly enough. After I explained the situation to him, he let out a skeptical and somewhat obnoxious laugh. He still elected to come check it out. And during the walk-up, I was slightly concerned it was going to be one of those situations where the, you know, it just disappears or some shit. But when we got to my bathroom, it was still there. Still weird as ever. When I opened it up and revealed the stairs, I could see a look of sheer shock drawn across his face. I doubt he'd ever experienced anything paranormal before, despite the stories he always tells. This was uncharted territory for the both of us. We mused for a few more hours deliberating on whether or not to go down. Well, it was actually just Jacob trying to convince me to go down with him. Come on, I remember him telling me. What a fucking story. For whatever reason, he was adamant about going through with this insane bullshit. Eventually, I agreed to go down like ten steps and then right back up, just to see what was going on. We opened our flashlights, and he went first. As soon as my body descended into whatever the hell this place was, I could feel the atmosphere shift around me. It's hard to explain, but it wasn't like when your ears pop at high altitudes. It was... it was something else. I went down the ten steps that I had promised before stopping and analyzing my surroundings. It wasn't like I could see much, though. It was just dark. Incomprehensibly dark. I watched as Jacob went further and further down. Are you sure this is a good idea? I said to him. None of this makes any sense. He goes down probably another eight steps further than me before turning. Dude, this is crazy. You coming? Fuck that. I told him. What kind of place is this? As I said this, his expression drops. What? I ask him. Do you hear that? He responds. I strained my ears trying to figure out what he was referring to. It was faint, but there. Water? I couldn't really tell if it sounded more like somebody was sloshing around ankle deep or if they were flat out swimming, but it was extremely far down, causing me to wonder how deep this place was. And then Jacob did the stupidest thing anybody could have done in that scenario. He yells out, who's there? And in the near utter silence of this apparently massive room, it echoes like hell. It was quiet after that. Quiet. No more movement. Whatever was down there had reacted. What happened next nearly gave me a heart attack. Heavy, wet footsteps began sprinting up the stairs. They were still faint at first, but they gained an inhuman pace. Jacob and I followed suit, scrambling the hell back up. He stumbled back into the room, closed the door behind us, and as soon as we did this, the footsteps ceased again. We didn't have peace of mind yet. 
There was no lock and the door isn't so heavy. Jacob quickly lugged the coffee table through the washroom, back into the hidden room, and then placed it upside down on top of the trap door. After that, we just stood there, breathless. We glanced at each other, both of our minds probably on the same page. We were still three days on this trip. I didn't really get much sleep that night. I mean, even with a drawer barricading the bathroom door, I kind of wish I'd grabbed the book back there. You know, maybe I could have analyzed it further, uncovering any possible answers, but for obvious reasons, I don't think going back down there is the best idea right now. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you so much for watching tonight's video, or by listening to tonight's episode of the podcast, or by finding this in some other way that's not a podcast or a video, which I probably didn't upload, but hey, thank you for listening. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. That includes everybody who's been waiting for me to update my Patreon, and I thank you all so, so much for being so patient with me. But especially, I want to give a thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Tristan Pelton, Acid System, Adam Garrick, Aaron Stormcrow, Ika Limchok, Amber Clark, Angelus, Atomorous, Bastion Beefcake, Blue the Enigma, Braden Morris, Broken Beast 320, Captain Scurvy, Caspian, Chelly J, Corey Kenshin, Cronut 509, Crusader Chocobo, Cryptic Nightmares, Curse Pox Primark, Dakota Lane Whetstone, Daniel Paulson, Darth Miver, Deleted Account, Dirt Diver 030, M, Esteban, Fester's Lampshade, Freddy Krueger, Gorag Tri Magazine, Grand Moth the Milky, Hades Nephew, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Harley, Himbo Jerry, Horseman Set Time, Insanity Gamer X, Jay Cairns, Jesus Cornell, Jordan Humble, Justin LaFontaine, Kaylee Ambrose, Kiri the Sloth, Crazy Kid, Cryolinian, Lambda M98, Lisa Cottrell, Little Crow, Lord Life's Best, Lupita Galvin, Love You Eminem, Matt Bach, Melted Lake, Michael Allen Jr. Bashirs, Mike, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Nate Cull, Nico Kyle, Psychomel, Red Shadow Cat, Rob Like Sharp Things, Sam Ahai, Sashi Sasaku, Seclude, Stricken, Tali Sue, Tater Chip, That Creepy Chick, The Ginger Bros, Turtle Man, Voice of Sand, William King, Xavier and Cheyenne, Yargul, and Zachary Graphius. If you would like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, then please head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, or you can always check out the names in the description down below, or you can honestly support for even just $1, because it really helps me out when you guys do, and I appreciate it infinitely. So thank you all on Patreon, thank you all so, so much. Thank you for watching on YouTube, and subscribing, and liking videos, and leaving comments about videos that you like, or leaving comments about why I haven't finished the fourth audiobook yet, or leaving comments about... <laughs> New stories that you've seen and you'd like to see on this channel. And to everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>